Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10 as well as Romans chapter 8 verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Father God for your word Lord God. Bless it, Jesus, that we might understand it and have wisdom in order to apply it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you got 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. For the sake of Christ, then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. All right, and so this is Paul speaking to the Corinthian church, and it's it's talking about how our weaknesses cause us to be better, right? It says, for the sake of Christ. So we don't do what we do for our own sakes. We don't do what we do so that we can be glorified. We do what we do all for the sake of Christ. If you remember, a lot of times if you say that very traditional grace before you um eat your food, you say for Christ's sake, right? Because what we do, we do for the sake of Christ. We want Christ to be lifted up. That way he can draw all men unto him. We want everything that we do to be for Christ, right? So um, it's only the things that we do for Christ that will last. So it says for the sake of Christ, then I am contented with weakness. So it is, it is the, the contentment that we have in being weak. It's going to cause something to be done for Christ, right? So it says, I am contented with weakness. What is content? Content is at a state of peace, right? At a state of, of, of peacefulness where it, you're happy. You're, you're okay with this thing, right? Even if this thing does not seem like a practical thing, even if this thing does not seem like a thing that will make you happy, for some reason, you're in a state of peace, right? It says, I am content with weakness. So that is for the sake of Christ, that somehow that is going to bring glory to Christ. So it says, insults, right? When somebody is saying evil things against you, someone is throwing words at you to try to cause harm, right? To try to scratch or get into your flesh or get underneath your skin, right? He's saying we got to be content with that, right? But why, why would we ever be content with someone throwing insults at us? Well, they threw insults at Christ, right? When he was on the cross, he, he had to take insults. He had to become a weak thing, right? He had to. Otherwise, he could have just struck everyone down who was around. But instead, he was content with weakness. He was content with insults. So how much more should we be content with weakness? Because when we are weak, we are made strong through him. He went through that same process and now he covers us in our weakness. He covers us as we are insulted, right? All right, so hardships. Hardships are another thing that we should become content with. We should be at a state of peace with. When you're going through something um, and it's difficult, it's it can be mentally difficult. It could be physically difficult. It, it can be a hardship on us, right? It can get into our spirit. It can get into our mind. But we need to, when that thing comes into us, we need to realize, hey, I'm at peace, right? Because all that I do is for the sake of Christ. All that I I have to face is for the sake of Christ. So, all right, persecutions, when someone is coming against you for your belief, for, for, for who you are in God, right? Those are persecutions. That is uh, something that you should be content for. Christ was persecuted, right? Um, all we do 
is for the sake of Christ. If we have a belief or a belief system and we are being persecuted, now mind you, we need to still follow the Holy Spirit, right? That doesn't mean that you go out and you just without wisdom spew out everything that you believe to everyone. No, we need to use the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, right? But if we still come under persecution after using the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the wisdom um, for how to use it in our daily applications, if we're coming under persecution, we need to be content with that. We need to be at peace with that, right? We need to be at a state of humbleness and happiness because we need to know that, hey, what I do is for the sake of Christ, all right? And then calamities. So we might come under, it, it may feel as if, kind of like with Job, oh, I'm doing the right thing, but all sorts of bad things are happening. We have to learn how to go within ourselves and find that place of peace, that place of contentment, even in a face of calamity, right? Even in the face of, uh, so it could be financial hardships, um, um, something wrong with your body something wrong with someone in your family you had those are calamities that could come upon you but even then we have to learn how to be content with those things right because everything that we suffer we suffer for the sake of Christ Christ is making us better right where we don't serve the world we don't serve our flesh we serve Christ right what we do is making us better all right and it says for I am for when I am weak then I am strong through those weak through those hardships, through those persecutions and calamities, Christ is making us stronger, right? He's making us better. He's making us wiser. In that weakness, we are finding strength. In those insults, we are being built up. In that hardship, we are finding contentment. In those persecutions, we are we are getting stronger and strengthened and girded up. As we go through calamities, we rise right? It's not, it's not the, I heard, um, I was reading a book earlier today, and it says it's not the calm, the calm seeds that make a skilled sailor, right? The calm seeds don't make a skilled sailor. It's the rough seeds. It's the storms of life that make a sailor skilled, right? We need to be skilled sailors. We need to have that little rudder that's underneath the sea that nobody can see that is causing us to sail in the right direction that is Christ it is all for the sake of Christ that we do the things that we do that we might bring glory to God and we might find that contentment right it doesn't come naturally sometimes sometimes it's hard sometimes we have to fight through some things to get to that contentment we have to fight through some things to get through that this, to get through those insults, to get through those hardships and calamities and persecutions. Yes, it may not be a cakewalk just because we we have to become content, right? Just because we have to get to that state of peace doesn't mean that it's always going to come naturally. Sometimes we have to fight tooth and nail to get to that contentment. But hey, We have the Holy Spirit to push us into those areas and to become stronger in those areas with time. We have to be patient. That is a gift of the Spirit that he gives us, right? So in in Christ, all, all that we do is for the sake of Christ. Then I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamity. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. That means when it says when I am weak, then I'm strong. That means I'm going to feel that thing sometimes, right? I'm going to feel that weakness. I'm going to feel that insult. When that person says that thing to you, you might feel it. It might scratch you deep, right? When you feel that hardship, when you feel those persecutions and calamities coming on you, it it doesn't mean that that shield is going to call 
cause you to never experience it. No, that shield is there so that you can have that peace regardless of what that storm is that you're going through. Amen. All right, let's go to the next completion verse, Romans chapter 8, verse 12. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, right? We're, we are debtors. We are debtors to Christ. We are debtors to that Holy Spirit, not to the flesh, right? So the flesh are represented by those things that we just talked about, weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities. Those are those are our things of the flesh. Those are things that we used to be slaves to. Whenever we used to be insulted and we'd be weak, we would fall down, right? Whenever we were debtors to the flesh and we receive an insult, we would say something back, right? Whenever we were debtors to to our flesh and to sin, we would we would uh get these hardships and we would blame people we would point the finger oh it was because of this I was raised this way and oh this happened to me that's why I'm experiencing this hardship no 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 that's not how we live anymore we're no longer debtors to the flesh we are debtors to the spirit when we receive hardship it's building us up right it is making us stronger in Christ all right, we are not debtors to persecution, right? So when someone is persecuting us and we used to be um, in our flesh, what would we say? Oh, woe is me, right? I'm being persecuted. Look at me. Everybody see, everybody see what I'm going through, right? We would, we would, we might, or we might have turned it around and said, oh, these people are evil and these people are going to go to hell and these these people are this and these people are that. Look at them. They're evil. That We're not slaves to our flesh anymore, right? We, we don't live that way. We live by the spirit. All that we do is for the sake of Christ. So when we receive persecution, we all the more are humbled and we are all the more content. We receive that peace that's inside of us. We might feel the persecution, but we go deeper into Christ and we say, hey, you know what? This is a storm and I know that you're going to give me peace Holy Spirit I know that you're going to take me to a deeper place in you I know that you are going to cause me to rise up in this persecution rise up in this calamity right when we receive um because we're not of the flesh anymore and we receive a calamity even of the flesh um or of what of our life right we're, we're we don't have to be enslaved to that we don't have to say oh woe is me look at me I'm sick look at me I, I deserve this I've been evil in my life oh I've done this in my life or that no when we receive calamities now we can look to Christ and say you're making me stronger you're making me better you're making me wiser I know how to go through this storm now I know how to become a skilled sailor through this amen all right let's read the conflation verses together again second corinthians chapter 12 verse 10 for the sake of christ then i am content with weaknesses insults hardships persecutions and calamities for when i am weak then i am strong and then it's conflated today with romans chapter 8 verse 12 so then brothers we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful word. Thank you that your word is treasure to us, Lord God. Help us to be the children, the inheritors, the, the, the children that you have called us to be, Lord God. Help us to be you in the in this world help our hands to be your hands in this world lord jesus show us where to go show us where to do show us how not to live according to the flesh but how to live walking by your spirit listening for your spirit lord god 
We give you all the glory. There is nobody like you, Lord God. Thank you for letting us be found in you. Thank you for letting us have your mind, Christ Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Jesus, for doing this for me. I receive you into my heart. Sit on the throne of my life. Lord God, lead me and guide me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way. He's going to help you make the decisions in your life so that you can stay on the path that God has set before you, according to Ephesians chapter 2. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Oh, yes, and don't forsake fellowshipping yourselves with other believers. Go to church, find a church home. Let the Holy Spirit lead you in that as well and find other believers to be around and stay sharpened in the word of God. Also, go out and make disciples of all men. Take care and be blessed.